In the modern world of integrating safety with style and efficiency, serviceability has become increasingly complex. In this CPT, we will examine windshield replacement techniques that have been developed to meet the same safety criteria intended by the design engineers at General Motors. While this training is an excellent orientation, you are strongly encouraged to use the latest service information when servicing the needs of our valued customers. To begin our look at windshield replacement, we will discuss what tools and materials should be used. We'll also cover the safety factors to be considered, as well as the replacement methods and various types of moldings. In this CPT, we will demonstrate proper techniques by actually replacing a windshield and examining the options needed to accommodate a variety of vehicles and circumstances. First, let's take a close look at a typical windshield. The different versions of windshields found in 1996 GM passenger cars are all constructed basically the same, from laminated glass. Laminated windshields are comprised of a layer of polyvinyl butyl plastic bonded between two pieces of glass. This 30 thousandths of an inch thick layer of plastic keeps the windshield from shattering when broken. This helps retain occupants inside the vehicle during an accident. Shading of laminated glass is usually applied only across the top of the windshield. A wide horizontal band of inner polyvinyl layer is darkened, not the glass. Shading is mainly done to shade the driver's eyes from the sun. Tinting, on the other hand, is done by applying a special metallic coating to the glass ingredients. This is usually done to the inner side of the outer layer of glass or to the polyvinyl layer. Typically, the entire windshield is tinted to aid the cooling of the vehicle interior. Head-up display technology requires special windshields to project a clear image in front of the driver. They must be replaced with the same code of windshield as was original equipment. Otherwise, the display may be out of focus or have a double or ghost image. Windows are identified by alphanumeric codes, such as the AS1 seen on this windshield. These codes identify and classify the windshield for particular applications. Notice it also indicates this is a shaded, laminated windshield. The removal of the windshield wiper arms from some vehicles requires the use of special tools. Always refer to the appropriate published service information for proper tool selection. Additionally, there are a variety of common tools used for the different shapes and styles of windshields, as well as for the different methods of windshield replacement. Adhesive removal tools can include reciprocating power tools, a variety of knives, wire tools, and pinch weld scrapers. Other tools required are a rear view mirror removal tool, suction cups, plastic paddles, and a caulking gun. As with all tools, always follow the manufacturer's recommendations for safety, maintenance, and repair of glass replacement tools. Different windshield installation methods require different tools to perform the job right. Always use the proper tool for the job. GM kit number 12346284 urethane adhesive is GM certified to meet two important regulations. The FMVSS212 windshield retention standard and FMVSS216 roof crush standard on late GM model vehicles. Glass prep number one is included in the kit and is a solvent based saline blend type primer. Glass prep number one is used for surface conditioning to promote adhesion to the glass. It must be used before the black number two primer and urethane adhesive. Black glass primer number two is also known as blackout primer. This polyurethane based solvent release primer is used to screen out ultraviolet rays and promote adhesion between the urethane and the glass prep number one. Windshield mounting surface pinch weld primer number three 
is specially formulated to promote adhesion between urethane adhesives and OEM painted or non-OEM primer only surfaces of the vehicle. Pinch weld number three is a methylene chloride free polyurethane based solvent release type primer. The directions included in the kit and on the labeling must be followed to ensure a proper repair. Additionally, these materials can have a shelf life of nine months. However, this training recommends that you use a six-month life cycle. Be sure your parts department rotates its stock. Protective clothing, safety glasses, and gloves should always be worn during glass service procedures. Be sure to use nitrile rubber gloves when handling the urethane primers and adhesives. Working with the urethane glass repair materials deserves special attention to protect yourself and your customers. Always work in an area with proper ventilation. Avoid letting any of the urethane materials contact your skin. Thoroughly read all safety precautions on the product labels. Never intermix material manufacturer systems. Stay with one system and use the complete system. Finally, always allow for the proper curing time for the urethane adhesives. Windshield replacement relies on two basic methods. One method is the short method, also known as a partial or close cut. With the short method, a good portion of the old adhesive is saved providing that it is in good condition and securely bonded to the vehicle. The second is the extended method. It is also called a long or full cut. The extended method is used when the old adhesive must be replaced because it is defective or is no longer securely bonded to the vehicle body. With the extended cut, a full layer of new adhesive is applied for windshield installation. The extended method varies slightly when adjacent body panels are replaced as part of the repair and metal surface preparation is necessary before the windshield can be installed. Whenever there is doubt about the adhesive's condition or whether the short method is appropriate, always use the extended method to ensure a proper repair. Remember that the urethane adhesive provides structural strength required for GM vehicles. Regardless of the installation method required, the procedure begins with the proper removal of the windshield. Be sure to protect both the interior and exterior from damage. Protect the seats, instrument panel, and fenders. Remove the rear view mirrors and wipers. Followed by the moldings and cowl panel, if necessary, to gain access all around the edge of the windshield. There are a few different styles of windshield reveal moldings, the largest difference being the manner in which they are retained on the car. Some reveal moldings are held in place with screws and are reusable if they're not damaged when replacing the windshield. Other reveal moldings, such as insert moldings, don't generally require the use of any special tools and likewise are reusable if not damaged. There are also moldings which attach to the windshield, not to the car, and are installed with the windshield. Some windshields have the molding as part of the windshield and are called modular windshields. These moldings are not removable and are only serviced by replacing the windshield. Regardless of the type of windshield, the important thing to remember is to avoid damaging the reveal moldings when they're being removed. Follow the appropriate service manual procedures for the model you're working on and use the tools following the tool manufacturer's recommendations. After removing the moldings, use a utility knife to score the exposed urethane around the entire outside of the windshield. Then use a cold knife, power knife, or wire tool to cut through the adhesive as close to the glass as possible. It is particularly important to wear safety gloves and glasses to protect against personal injury. Now, using caution, lift out the windshield. Be sure to handle and store it for proper disposal.
With the old windshield removed, you must now decide on the replacement method. If the original urethane is still securely adhered to the metal in the windshield opening and shows no signs of damage, the short method can be used. If it's not securely adhered or free of flaws, the extended method will be required. Next, install the reveal molding to the new windshield. Be sure to align the notch in the molding center to the notch in the top center of the windshield paint band. With the method selected, in this case the short method will be used, dry fit the new windshield into the opening. Using masking tape, tape the corners of the windshield to the car. Slit the tape at the glass edge and at the top of the molding to mark the glass location. Take care not to cut the painted surface surrounding the windshield. Then remove the windshield from the opening and place it on a window stand or inside up on a clean surface. Using a clean isopropyl alcohol dampened cloth or approved GM glass cleaner, clean around the inside surface edge, commonly known as the paint band. If this procedure had required the original windshield to be reinstalled, any existing urethane would need to be removed from the edge. Additionally, always make sure there is no damage to the paint band. Clear glass prep number one is applied around the entire perimeter of the glass edge using a new dauber. Apply the clear number one about 12 to 18 millimeters wide on the windshield paint band. Take care not to let the glass prep number one run into the viewing area. Although this primer dries almost instantly, it could stain the viewing area. With the clear glass prep number one properly applied, make sure the black glass primer number two is thoroughly shaken and use a new dauber to apply it over the same areas as the clear glass prep number one. Let it dry for about 10 minutes. Also, never apply the clear number one over the black number two and do not touch the primer coated surface. In this demonstration of the short method, the pinch weld primer number three is not used. Proper application of the urethane adhesive is particularly important. First, cut the tip of the application nozzle for a four and a half millimeter bead for the short method procedure. Using a cartridge type caulking gun, apply a smooth continuous bead of urethane adhesive over the old urethane left on the car. With the aid of rubber suction cups and a helper, align the windshield to the previously positioned masking tape. Firmly press the windshield into place and use a paddle to fill in any gaps in the adhesive. Regardless of the replacement method selected, immediately water test your work. Be sure to use a soft spray never high pressure water or compressed air. And warm or hot water is preferred to aid in curing the urethane. Complete water testing procedures are found in your service manual, section 10-1. If any leaks are found, apply extra urethane at the leak point with a plastic paddle. With no leaks present, reattach the trim, tape the windshield to the body to limit any movement, and clean up any urethane that has squeezed out. Allow the urethane to cure at room temperature for six hours at 72 degrees Fahrenheit to help ensure customer safety and satisfaction. Then necessary trim and components can be installed. When the urethane bed is separated or torn and it must be removed and replaced with new urethane adhesive, the extended or long method is required. Modular windshields with the molding permanently attached to the glass also require the extended method. As mentioned before, be sure to protect both the interior and exterior from damage. Protect the seats, instrument panel, and fenders. Modular windshields typically need the urethane to be cut from inside the vehicle. This may necessitate the use of different tools and special care not to damage the vehicle. Usually, when the urethane is cut from inside the car, it is left too uneven to allow the short method option, and the remaining urethane must be removed from the pinch weld flange to perform the extended method. 
there are several important considerations regarding the condition of the pinch weld flange. First of all, if the flange is corroded or if sheet metal repairs are required, the flange must be refinished to present a primer only surface. Also, if paint repairs are required, mask the flange bonding area to present a primer only surface as well. These primer applications are typically two component catalyzed materials. Be sure to follow the paint manufacturer's directions for mix, application, and drying times. For an extended method installation, use pinch weld primer number three black. Be sure it's well shaken and apply it to any exposed original paint or scratch to bare metal areas on the pinch weld flange. Allow 10 minutes for the primer to dry. Dry fit the new windshield into the opening and as before, use masking tape to mark the glass location. Slit the tape at the glass edge and remove the windshield from the opening. Place the windshield on a window stand or inside up on a clean surface. Using a clean isopropyl alcohol dampened cloth or approved GM glass cleaner, clean around the outer edge and the inner surface of the windshield molding where the urethane is to be applied. Then apply clear glass prep numbers one and two and let it dry for about 10 minutes. Next, apply anti-squeak lubricant to the molding edges to minimize noise. For the extended method, you'll also need to apply a dam material approximately 12 to 18 millimeters from the edge of the glass. This will control urethane squeeze out. Cut the tip of the application nozzle and at the perimeter, apply a smooth, continuous urethane adhesive bead using a cartridge type caulking gun. Be sure to apply the urethane to the inner surface using the edge of the molding as a guide. Some moldings also have a two-sided tape to prevent wind noise. Remove the tape covering before installing the windshield. With the aid of rubber suction cups and a helper, align the windshield to the previously positioned masking tape. Firmly press the windshield into place. As with the short method, the next step is to use water to check for leaks while accelerating the cure time. Remember not to flood the windshield or use a high pressure water spray. Tape the windshield to the body to limit any movement and clean up any urethane that has squeezed out. It's a good idea to roll down the side glass slightly to prevent pressure builds if doors are opened and closed on the vehicle. Due to the legal responsibilities of glass replacement, Several steps are required for maximum liability protection. Be sure to restore the vehicle to OEM condition by following vehicle manufacturer's recommendations to the letter. Always spend time to do the job right the first time. Proper preparation is the key. Check the installation. Don't assume it's right. Test your work. Also document your installation procedure including the products used, the temperature and humidity during the repair, and all warnings discussed with the customer. With today's cars, windshields play an important role in vehicle integrity and safety, and windshield replacement techniques have become increasingly complex. While this training is an excellent orientation, always use the latest service information when servicing the needs of our valued customers. These customers trust service professionals like you to fix them right the first time, on time, every time. You should now prepare to take the test for this course. To take the test, you'll need a number two pencil and the official student attendance and test form in front of you. Make sure that the seven digits of the course number printed in block nine of the form match the seven digits of the course number printed on the course book and the videotape label. Start with the attendance and test form in front of you with a clipped corner in the lower right. This is the only answer sheet you'll need for this course. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a series of circles under the letters A through E. When you've decided on an answer, completely fill in the circle under the letter that matches the letter of your answer. 
Since your test will be checked by computer, avoid making any stray marks on the form. If you change your mind, completely erase your old answer before marking your new answer. Also, it's important not to get dirt or grease on or to fold the answer sheet. Any of these conditions could cause the computer to incorrectly check your test. As you take this test, remember, there's no time limit. Please complete the sections of the student attendance and test form which identify you and your dealership. If this part of the form is not filled out correctly, you and your dealership won't receive proper credit or certification for this course. Start by placing the form in front of you with a clipped corner in the upper right. In the upper left-hand corner, print your last name in block one. Only one letter goes in each box. Print your first and middle initial in block two. Print the name of your dealership in block three. Your dealership city in block four. And the official postal abbreviation for your dealership state in block five. Your social security number goes in block six. Enter your dealer code in the space provided. Put today's date in block eight. Back at block one, you'll see an alphabet under each letter of your name. Completely fill in the circle of the letter that matches the letter that you printed at the top of the column. Follow the same steps for your initials and for the digits of your social security number, the date, and your dealer code. Once you have completed all of the parts of the test, make a photocopy of the form for your records. After copying, put the original in the pre-addressed envelope. No postage is needed. Good luck. To inquire about CPT test scores and to order additional copies of test materials, call 1-800-468-6657. Please have your dealer code and course number handy when you call.